When we import an image into Unity, there are a bunch of settings that we can apply. And this allows us to create different types of textures that we can use different places in Unity. So if you click on any image in Unity, you can see the import settings for that image. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at these settings and we're going to see what effect they have. And we're going to be working in the texture scene. And so go ahead and open that and click and take a look at one of the textures. Now by default, your texture is imported as just a regular texture type. And if you click on that or hover on this, you can see the um, tooltip. A texture is just a normal image such as a, a diffuse texture or et cetera, et cetera. But there are a bunch of different types. And each of these gives us different import settings, different things that we can do to our texture. So just going through these quick, a normal map, as we've seen in earlier videos, allows us to add bumpiness to the surface of an object. Editor GUI and Legacy, this has actually been deprecated. It's no longer used. It's been replaced with Sprite, and that's used in 2D games and in UIs, so in menus and things. Next up is the cursor type, and this is used for replacing the default mouse with a specific cursor for your game. Next up, next up is something called a cube map, and a cube map is actually a texture that's been sort of sliced up and stretched so that it fits on all the faces of a cube. And there's a couple of places specifically where we want to use those. Next up are cookies, and we looked at this in the video on light cookies. This allows us to do cool things by applying textures to our lights. Next up is something called light maps, and this goes with Unity's global illumination system. So when you bake the lights, when you pre-calculate the lights, it saves the information into a series of images, and these are called light maps. And then last is advanced, and the advanced texture type has a bunch of settings um, sort of common to some of the, and, and unique to some of the different types of textures. So this kind of is the, the shotgun approach where we want to do a bunch of stuff. And in this video, we're just going to focus on the basic texture type, and we're going to look at these various import settings, and we're going to see what effect they have in our scene. And I've created a material called test material, and I've applied it to every object in the scene. And as we go through, we can just swap out which texture is being applied. So we can um, use different textures because different textures are, are going to uh, be affected in different ways by these import settings. And then we can see how they look in scene. And we're just going to start from the top to the bottom. So we're first going to start with this thing, and I'll stretch this out, called alpha from grayscale. And alpha from grayscale is actually going to be best seen with this black-white stripes. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply that as my diffuse texture. And we'll zoom in on things a little bit here. And alpha from grayscale, what that does is it allows us to take an image and add an alpha channel to it. So in our case, we have this stripe image. And if you look at the bottom, the preview here, you're going to see, first of all, the size this is 256 by 256 pixels. And then you'll see what type of image it is. And this is just a regular RGB. But you'll notice it doesn't have an A. There's no alpha channel. So what we can do is if we click this alpha from grayscale, and then we also make sure that alpha is transparency, um, that sets it up as the alpha channel. If those are both checked and we hit apply, we're going to see two things happen. We're going to see a button appear right here, and we're going to see RGB is going to change to RGBA. All right, and we're also going to see that now we have a transparency to our image. And you can see this in scene, that where we had white in our original image, it's fully opaque. And where we had black, this wasn't a perfect black, it was just kind of a dark gray, but that's mostly transparent. And that actually allows us then to start seeing through our objects in the scene. And if we click on this newly created button, what we're looking at right now is the red, green, and blue plus the alpha. If we just want to look at the alpha, we can click on this and this will just show us the alpha channel without all of the other colors. Now this looks just like our original image and that's exactly what alpha from grayscale does. If we turn this back off, take a look at our original image, where it's lightest, it's most full alpha. So white is full alpha and black is no alpha. And we can see this uh, with the forest floor, um, which I've previously set, so I'm going to restore. So this is what our forest floor texture looks like. And when it calculates the alpha from grayscale, it's going to take this image and turn it into grayscale. So it's going to ignore the colors and just flatten it out so that it's gray. And then it's going to take that grayscale image and make that the alpha channel. So that where our original image was brightest, it's going to be most opaque. And I can show you this real quick. Um, so again, where it was brightest on the bright leaves, it's most opaque. Where it was darkest, that's where it's going to be mostly transparent.
moving right along. Next up, we have something called wrap mode. And I'm going to apply our leather so we can take a look at this. Wrap mode actually goes with our tiling. So we can tile an image multiple times across our surface. So for instance, if I start to drag up the tiling, whoops, I'm going to change one setting in our image that we're going to come back to in just a moment. Um, so our, our default is set to repeat. Um, and if we go over to this test material and we start to take up our tiling, we're going to see that our texture repeats multiple times. So I'm just going to set this to two by two. And this is not a texture that repeats very well. It's not a seamless texture. That's the term we use because you can see the seam where the edge of the texture ends. So we have this tiling and the setting, this wrap mode affects what happens after one tile of the image. So if I set this to clamp, what's actually going to happen is it's not going to repeat the texture. It's just going to take the last pixel and then it's going to stretch that pixel across the rest of the image. It's going to take the last pixel and stretch it. And here it's just going to take this corner pixel and stretch it all the way out. And if we zoom way in, you can start to see kind of how that works. So this looks really ugly and you might ask, why do we even want this as a setting? It doesn't make any sense with the leather, but it does make sense with our gradient. So I'm going to go ahead and take our gradient and we'll just go ahead and apply our setting. Um, I'm going to take our gradient and I'm going to apply it to the test material. Uh, I'm just going to set this back to one by one tiling. So one thing that's going to happen is whenever you have tiling, it's going to essentially blend a little bit between one side and the other. It's a little bit of the stuff on the left is going to bleed onto the right. And that's not an issue at all when we have leather. In fact, that's kind of what we want when we tile. Um, but it's an issue here because you can see that while this gradient should be fully black on the edge, it actually has this little bit of white that's bleeding through. And so if we go to our gradient and we change the wrap mode to clamp, you're going to immediately see that that goes away. We have this nice crisp edge. So that's the purpose of clamp is when we have an object and we don't want when the left and the right sides are very different, we don't want one bleeding to the other. And this goes the same for the top and bottom. So if I go back to our test material, I'm going to apply these settings. And by the way, when it asks me to apply, what's really happening is I've made the change and it's giving me a preview, but it hasn't actually applied it to our underlying texture yet. And if I go back and I change the tiling here to two by two, then um, we're going to see that our texture essentially goes once through. So it goes from black to white, and then it just clamps that white color and spreads it all the way across. And if I set this to say five by five, again, we're going to see that it goes one fifth of the way and then it clamps that white for the rest. So in this case, it actually looks really nice to have it clamped and we can get some different effects with that. So going back to our textures, the next thing is something called filter mode. And I'm going to go back to the leather for this one. And we're going to turn off our um, clamping. And then we're going to turn our tiling back down to one by one. So if I go ahead and zoom way in on this image to where it really starts to look bad, where we're looking kind of at the individual pixels, the wrap, I'm sorry, the filter mode, if we set this to point, we can actually see the individual pixels of the image. If we set this to bilinear, then what it's going to do is it's going to uh, sample with the neighbor pixels. And essentially what it's going to do is it's going to blur. And the reason that we'd want the filter mode set to bilinear is that when we start to zoom in on an object, it's going to continue to look better than if we were just doing point sampling, even when we get fairly close into it. Um, and so point filtering, while it may look worse in the case of our um, leather, there are times when you would want to use it. And one of those examples would be uh, when you're doing pixel art. So for instance, you know, sort of retro games where you actually want to see the individual pixels. You know, you're doing Minecraft type games versus bilinear, which most of the time is what you're going to want to use. And I believe when you pull a, a texture in, that's the default that it applies. There's also something called trilinear, and that has to do with mit maps, and we'll get to that in a different video. And last but not least, we have something called aniso. And aniso has to do with when we look at textures at a very oblique angle. And I'm going to use this brick texture because I think that that actually shows it a little bit more clearly. So I'm just going to drag this brick over, and we're going to look kind of straight across this texture. I'm going to see how horizontal I can get. So we're at a very oblique angle. 
And then I'm going to go to this and um, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to my material first. I'm just going to set the tiling um, to say two. And this is actually going to exaggerate this a little bit. Um, so what the anisole level does, if we take this down to zero, you're going to see that as we get further away from the camera, it totally blurs and we lose all of the lines. And this is kind of the same thing that the filter mode is doing, kind of. Um, but essentially, we're just uh, we're not getting that accuracy to, to keep the shapes of the bricks as we get further away. If we take this up to one, we'll see that that gets better. And then we're not going to see a lot of improvement until we get way high up. And then between like 16 and about 11, hopefully you can see it in the video. Um, let me make the game view a little bit bigger here. But at the sort of very extreme edge, it's going to get blurrier, and then it's going to get clearer. And uh, what's actually happening is, if we think about our camera as being sort of in the center of our screen, looking out into the scene, as we're looking out towards this top pixel, we're looking very parallel, whereas this bottom pixel, we're actually looking kind of down at it. So as we look more and more parallel, things are going to get blurred. And taking up the ISO is something that's going to help you alleviate that. Now this does take additional calculations on the disk. So this is not something that by default we want to crank all the way up on all of our textures. Typically we're going to use this for things that we can look at flat. So things like floors and walls. We're not going to worry about it on say a vehicle or a gun because we're just not going to get into that grazing angle. And by default the NISO level is going to start at one. And this also, the NISO level also has to do with mip maps and we're going to again get into that in another video. And so these are sort of the settings specific to the texture texture type. And there's a couple of settings down here that apply to all of our different texture types. So let's take a quick look through those while we're here. So the first one is going to be the max size. Um, and by default, this is actually, I believe, going to be 1024. But what this does is this allows you to downsample your image in Unity to create a smaller version of the image on import. So right now I have a 512 by 512 pixel image. This is my uh, brick. And I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger so that we can see this effect. So if I take this down to 256 and hit apply, then it's actually going to create a downscaled version. Likewise, if I take this to 128, it's going to create an even smaller version. And you're going to see that effect in scene. Now, one thing that's important to note is all of our settings here, none of them overwrite the original image on disk. So if I right click and I go and I take a look at this actual brick texture on disk and I take a look at the size, the size of this on disk is 900 by 900. So the underlying image hasn't changed, none of the settings, um, it has only changed in Unity. So you can think of Unity when it imports textures, it kind of makes a copy essentially in Unity. And then all the import settings apply to that copy and don't overwrite the original. One last thing to note with this is it will only downscale, it will not upscale. So if I set this all the way up to 8192, and this is the max texture size that Unity supports. Um, most modern computers will support this, some don't. Uh, almost every computer is going to support 4096. That's kind of your, your biggest size that you should be using if you're trying to do cross-platform games. But if I set this all the way up, it's never going to get bigger than essentially this is our 900 by 900, but it upscales it to the nearest what these are, are powers of two. So two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, each one of these doubles. And by default, it's just going to take our 900 by 900 and it's going to say, okay, the nearest one to that is 1024 and it scales it up to 1024 by 1024, but it's not going to scale it all the way up to 8K by 8K. And the last thing that we have in our list here is the format. And the format we can actually see at the bottom, this says compressed DXT1. And in another video, we'll get into what DXT means. That's just a way of compressing images. Um, we have a couple options. And if we switch this over to true color and hit apply, then it'll just say RGB 24 bits. And as we saw in the um, uh, textures in depth video, 24 bits means that we have eight bits of info in red, eight bits of info in green, eight bits of info in blue. So this is what they call true color format. And we'll take a look at these again when we get to the advanced texture type. And this actually gives us a lot more formats to choose from. And these again are the common settings that are gonna apply to the base texture type, and then the common settings that are gonna apply to all texture types. And hopefully you've seen what effect these have when we're viewing those textures in the scene.
And just as a quick recap, we can add an alpha channel. We can change the wrap mode when we tile an image multiple times across our material. The filter mode affects whether things are blurry when we zoom way in or whether we can see the individual pixels. And the anisole level affects how images look when you're looking at them at a very grazing angle.